how much you used to spend on a smartphone three years back versus how much you're spending on a smartphone now. Well, there could be many reasons for that, not just what the title says, like your affordability might have changed. So you're buying an expensive phone now. For example, you're upgrading from a Redmi Note 5 Pro to a OnePlus 7 instead of Redmi 7 Pro. Or you want to be on iOS for various reasons. So you got to buy an iPhone and iPhone's price keeps increasing. I mean, I did a dedicated video on why iPhones are expensive in India, link in the description as well. So reasons like these don't have anything to do with the brand strategies. They're not making you spend more. You are making you spend more. But only a small percentage of people have these reasons. Most other users stick to the same series of phones, or at least they try to stick to the same budget. And that's where the brand strategies kick in. How much you used to spend on a Redmi Note phone or a OnePlus phone three years back is probably way less than how much you're spending on them now, right? Redmi and OnePlus fans don't worry, we'll get to Samsung in a moment. And Samsung fans, we'll talk about Apple as well. But before that, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Ashwin Sundar. This is Technology Jock. If you find this video informative, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. Spending more on anything is annoying. But if you're into trading, you can use this amazing trading app from our sponsor, Expert Option, to earn quite a lot of money. This app has been around for over five years and there are over 18 million traders using Expert Option. You can use the free demo account with $10,000 to practice. And when you're ready to open a real account, you can start trading with a minimum deposit of $50. Not just stocks, you can trade on more than 100 assets, including gold, Bitcoin, etc. You can withdraw your profits instantly to any supported e-wallet. So go ahead, download Expert Option app, link in the description. Now a few disclaimers before we begin. This is not a paid video. I'm not targeting any brand. This is purely my view of the market. Of course, I'm not a marketing person uh, for any brand, so I don't know 100% what they're actually doing in there. These are just my observations, my opinions. You're totally welcome to share your views in the comment section, unless you're a marketing guy from any brand, in which case, obviously you're not gonna agree with me. So when I said most people stick to the same series of phones, I wasn't just pulling the information out of nowhere. Now you and me are tech savvy people. We might not care about brand value and stuff. If a phone is really good and it's priced reasonably, we end up buying it. But a lot of people have found their comfort zones in terms of brands. Take any brand, for example, it has tens of thousands of hardcore fans. Samsung and Xiaomi probably have the most number of fans in India. And then there is OnePlus and of course Apple, which has the fiercest fans. Even brands with relatively less market share like Nokia and Realme have hardcore fans. Realme's growth speaks for itself 600% in the past one year. They have a dedicated community website for fans so these people, a lot of them don't just love the brands of their phones, but also hate some other brands. So basically they'll never go to those brands even if they offer free phones. Okay, I'm exaggerating a bit, but look at it this way. RCB fans don't just love RCB, they also hate CSK. And the same goes to CSK fans who generally hate Mumbai Indians. So tell me, if you are an RCB fan, can you ever imagine supporting CSK in future? If Virat Kohli goes to CSK, then maybe so that's exactly what's happening here as well these fans stay loyal to the brands and it need not necessarily be these hardcore fans a lot of people keep going back to the same brand or the same phone series because they've grown to be comfortable with it here's a research done by Merrill Lynch over 32,000 people have been surveyed and it says 70% of Apple users want their next smartphone to be Apple as well 54% of Huawei users want to get back to Huawei 53% of Samsung users want to stay on Samsung. Of course, 32,000 people is not a huge number compared to the millions of smartphones being sold in India, but it's just to give you an idea. Going back to the same brand is very common, but going back to the same series of phones? Well, that completely depends on people's budgets. As long as they want to just spend a certain amount of money on phones, they're gonna get a phone from the same series. You guys tell me, how many of you have a phone which belongs to the same series as your previous phone. A lot of my friends have Redmi Note 7 Pro now, and they all had Redmi Note phones before this. 
some of them had Redmi Note 5 Pro and some even had the Redmi Note 3. So tell me if you're one of them. Have you moved from Redmi to Redmi, Redmi Note to Redmi Note, Samsung budget phone to Samsung budget phone, Apple to Apple? Let me know in the comments. So there are two words in particular that are messing with us, making us pay more for smartphones. Pro and Plus. Now hear me out. Almost every iPhone used to have a launch price of $650 in the US. iPhone 4, 4S, 5, 5S. Now they introduced iPhone 6 at the same price, $650 but also introduced a larger variant iPhone 6 Plus at $750. Now, by that time, they knew people wanted larger phones. I mean, that's why they introduced a larger variant. And even those who were okay with smaller iPhones were pushed to get the larger one by paying $100 more. Because the iPhone 6 Plus had OIS, but the iPhone 6 didn't. Things became even worse with the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. The 7 Plus had a second camera for optical zoom and portrait mode, the iPhone 7 didn't. Back then, both optical zoom and portrait mode were a big deal. The 7 Plus's portrait mode was awesome, one of the best implementations back then. Same thing with iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. Only after introducing a dedicated budget model, the iPhone 10R, Apple started providing the same set of features for both their flagship models, iPhone XS and XS Max. Let's now take OnePlus. As it is, they were hiking prices by 2000 or 3000 rupees with the launch of every new OnePlus phone. And then this year, they launched the OnePlus 7, which is pretty much the same as the OnePlus 60, just minor changes, but cheaper. So the 60's resale value took a huge hit. That's one thing. I had to sell my OnePlus 60 for like 19,000 rupees and OnePlus 6 or 60 users looking for a real upgrade had to get this OnePlus 7 Pro, which is 49,000 rupees, which is the kind of money that a OnePlus user never dreamt of spending a few years back. But on the other hand, things have changed now. OnePlus has thousands of loyal fans. I bought the OnePlus 7 Pro on the first day of sale in the OnePlus Experience store in Chennai, and I had to stand in the queue for over two hours. Thousands of loyal thing about. OnePlus knows this, and that's why they're taking a chance by pricing their phones quite high. For comparison, it's 4,000 yuan in China, which is around 40,000 rupees. And for the same reasons, people buy the OnePlus 7 as well, even though there are other options around the same price which offer slightly better value. Well, some might argue OnePlus has better brand value, service centers, etc. But honestly speaking, OnePlus doesn't have that many service centers. There is only one in Chennai. For comparison, Xiaomi has eight exclusive service centers and seven authorized ones in Chennai alone. Now, I know a lot of people buy OnePlus because of oxygen OS or some other genuine reason, but trust me, there are people who buy the OnePlus 7 only because they feel, wow, it's OnePlus and it's available for just 33,000 rupees. So yeah, let's now have a look at Xiaomi. Yes, even Xiaomi has done something similar. Redmi Note series. Redmi Note, Note 2, Note 3, Note 4, all were priced under 10,000 rupees. The base models at least. Now, unlike today, back then, Xiaomi was the undisputed king in the budget segment. There was no real competition back then because they used to provide killer specs like Snapdragon 650 under 10,000 rupees. And then they fell in love with Snapdragon 625. So many Xiaomi phones had that chip, including the Redmi Note 4. And the next year, during the Redmi Note 5 launch, Obviously, people were expecting something big from Xiaomi. Definitely not the same chip. Xiaomi, on the other hand, just couldn't afford to give anything better than 625 at 10,000 rupees. So we know what happened next. They launched the Redmi Note 5 with the same Snapdragon 625 chip at 10,000 rupees and a new Redmi Note 5 Pro with Snapdragon 636 at 14,000 rupees, 40% 40 hike. They could have introduced it as a new series of phones but the Redmi Note name had its own value and just like how a lot of OnePlus users bought the OnePlus 7 Pro instead of 7, a lot of Redmi Note users bought the Note 5 Pro instead of the Note 5. Because Note 5 Pro was a genuine upgrade in terms of specs, unlike the Note 5. Uh, now, even the Redmi Note 7 Pro was a huge upgrade, but Xiaomi didn't hike the price by introducing another Pro Plus model or something. Uh, Snapdragon 675 was not a budget level chipset. Before the Note 7 Pro, the cheapest phone with a Snapdragon 675 chip was 28,000 rupees, and the cheapest phone with a 48 megapixel IMX586 sensor was 38,000 rupees. 
So just moments before Mr. Manukumar Jain announced the prize, I was hearing some interesting guesses in the event. Now, I was surrounded by super popular, experienced YouTubers and two of them said the price would be around 17,000 rupees, but it was 14,000. That's how much value the Note 7 Pro offered at that point of time. Two experienced YouTubers thought it was going to be 17,000. What I'm trying to say is, even though it was a huge upgrade, Xiaomi didn't hike the price because right now, things are a little hard for some brands. Many brands are offering great phones uh, at around 14, 15,000 rupees right now. And there is no way Xiaomi or Realme can imagine introducing a phone with a higher price tag. I bet a glass of Complan, even the Redmi Note 8 Pro will have at least one variant at 14,000 rupees. In China, it's the 6GB RAM, 64GB storage variant. In India, it, they might launch a new 464 variant at 14K and 664 at 15 or 16K. But Xiaomi will not move on from the 14K price tag for a while, even if they offer crazy killer specs that are probably worth 2000 or 3000 more. Samsung. Now, I gotta be honest. I like Samsung's pricing when it comes to flagships. Some of their flagships have, were actually cheaper in India than in the US. That's a big deal. On the other hand, they also did what OnePlus did with the 7 and 7 Pro. Introduced the Galaxy S8 Plus along with an S8. Which was fine because both phones had very similar specs. Of course, the battery capacity was more on the S8 Plus because it was a bigger phone. But both phones had Quad HD display and almost every other feature was available on both phones. So people who were okay with the compact form factor of the S8 ended up buying the S8. They weren't pushed to get the S8 Plus. But what Samsung has been doing since that, it's kind of, okay, it's not kind of, it's outright ridiculous. The S9 Plus had dual cameras, the S9 had a single camera. The difference between the Note 10 and Note 10 Plus is even more noticeable. The Note 10 has a full HD display. The Galaxy Note 4 from 2014 has a Quad HD display. The Note 10 Plus has a micro SD slot, the Note 10 doesn't. The Note 10 Plus has a time of flight depth vision camera using which you can play around with those cool AR features. The Note 10 doesn't have it. At this point, it looks very obvious that Samsung wants us to spend more and get the Note 10 Plus. The battery capacity is also very less, 3400 mAh I guess versus 4300 on the Note 10 Plus. Sure, Note 10 is a great phone, but at almost the same price, I feel the S10 Plus is a better phone with Quad HD Plus display, headphone jack, much larger battery, micro SD slot, and a slightly larger display. So it's not really a Note 10, it's a Note 10 Lite or Note 10e, which is exactly what MKBHD said. Now, of course, this applies to every brand that we just talked about. The Redmi Note 5 Pro should have been the Note 5 and the Note 5 should have been Note 5 Lite or something. Because come on, both Redmi Note 4 and Note 5 had the same Snapdragon 625 chip. How can you call that an upgrade? An upgrade after a year with the same chip is definitely not an upgrade. OnePlus 7 Pro should have been OnePlus 7. OnePlus 7 should have been OnePlus 60 square. So this whole marketing thing offering a slightly better phone as an upgrade and offering a real upgrade at a much higher price is the problem. Now, whether those phones are worth the money or not is a different topic. I mean, OnePlus could have launched just the 7 Pro at, at around 42,000 rupees and everyone would have been happy. The 60 was 38, the 7 Pro was 42, 7 Pro is a much better phone than the 60. People wouldn't mind spending 4,000 rupees more. Now, 49,000 rupees, I wouldn't say the 7 Pro is overpriced now. You can watch my review. I've recommended the phone to many. There is a difference between overpriced and could have been priced better, like the Redmi K20. And phones like the Redmi Note 7 Pro are great value for money. They haven't done that price hike thing uh, since the Note 5 Pro. So I'm not saying the phones are not worth the price and I'm not saying every brand does the price hike thing all the time. But overall, in the long run, we realize we have been forced to pay more for smartphones than we used to. Another easier way brands follow to make us pay more for smartphones is by launching more phones in the same series. Now I know some Realme 3 Pro users personally who are about to buy the Realme 5 Pro. I mean, it's been like three months. And two years back, I was at the OnePlus store during the OnePlus 5T launch event. A lot of people who lined up outside the store to get it were using the OnePlus 5. And this year, when I went to get the 7 Pro, I saw the 6T on many hands. 
I'm sure a lot of OnePlus 7 users are gonna get the OnePlus 7T now. Now imagine a scenario where OnePlus skips the 7T and releases the 8 in 2020. The current OnePlus 7 users would still wait and get the OnePlus 8. They won't be like, okay, OnePlus is skipping the 7T, we should get some other phone. iPhone. Just kidding. Which means a lot of people are again spending way more than they would if brands didn't introduce two phones a year in the same series. Now, of course, all this is happening because of the enormous smartphone craze here in India. Brands are just taking advantage of that. So just think twice before getting a new smartphone. Just ask yourself this one question. Do you really need a new phone? Is your current phone holding you back in any way? That's it. Guys, a lot of research and hard work went behind the making of this video. So I demand you to share this video with your friends, social media, family, WhatsApp, wherever possible. Thanks for watching. See you very soon. Bye.